for the benefit of those of you who might be prayerfully reading along with us, and then to those of you who so desire to read this portion of scripture upon your return home. It is founded in the seventh division of the Psalm and verse 1 and Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 24. If you're reading from the King James rendering, you shall find the following words thusly. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Solomon says in the second chapter of Ecclesiastes at verse 24, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Let me read the latter portion. Uh, verse 24 again for the sake and emphasis of our argument today that it was from the hands of God. David declared the A and B stanza of the 75th division of Psalms unto thee O God do we give Thanks. He repeats it again by saying, Unto thee do we give thanks. Today I want to simply talk about give thanks. That's all I want to talk about today. Uh, give thanks. I know some of you and most of you here today saying, Lord, I hope Rev don't have a long sermon. There's a game I'm waiting to see. And I hope he don't hold me long. There are some of you who are sitting in this place today are saying, Lord, let him be tired. So he can only preach about 10 minutes. Well, for those of you who prayed that prayer, the Lord heard your prayer. But let me also say this while I'm while I'm standing, although I'm going to give you a short one, I'm going to give you something else that I know you ain't going to like. And that is far too often we come to church and we want to put a time limit on what God has to say to us. We ain't got a problem coming and listening that somebody sing. We ain't got a problem with coming for anything else. But it looks like when God gets ready to speak, folk tend to have a problem with it. And we often wonder why things don't get any better for us. I want you to know that if it wasn't for the grace of God, you wouldn't be here today. All of us in here are enjoying the benefits of God's grace and mercy. And for that, any time God needs to speak, we ought to have ourselves prepared. Thank you, God. And a 
attentive to hear with intensity what God has to say. But as I told you, God answered your prayer, so let me move out of the way quickly by telling you that it has come upon us where each year we come together to uh, share with our family and our friends and loved ones where we come together and we break out with our turkeys, our hams, our mustard greens, our candied yams, our rice dressing, our cornbread dressing, our cranberry sauce, our pumpkin pies, our sweet potato pies, all those good things that come together. We, we are preparing ourselves, and most of us this week will be in and out of the grocery store, some of us will probably be standing in line fighting for the last box of dressing mix uh, or what have you, making sure that you did not get missed out on all of the ingredients that you need to be able to have a wholesome Thanksgiving feast. But brothers and sisters, allow me to tell you that if you only wait one time a year, to get these things together to be able to have a Thanksgiving feast, you are in bad shape. Simply because every day of your life, every second, every minute, every hour of the day, you and I ought to be thankful because of the benefits that God has laid upon us. You and I ought to be thankful and grateful. And we ought to be able to tell God, thank you. Simply because you and I are yet among the fragment of survivors. You didn't feel me. Listen, listen. Listen to me. There are some people in this house right now in which they have been through trouble, trial, turmoil, test, Surgery after surgery, operation after operation. But yet they are still saying, thank you. Some have gone through a battery of cancer treatment and they don't even look like they used to look. And, but they're still saying, thank you. Some people have lost their job. You've, you've been handed a pink slip. Your property has been foreclosed. Your car has been repossessed. Your children have gone crazy. Your husband acting a plum fool. Your, your wife acting and caught up like she and the young and the restless. And yet God left you and me here another year to tell the story. And that's why we ought to say thank you. But I ought to be praising and thanking God, not just waiting for that day to eat the turkey, but we ought to be praising and thanking God every day simply because we are yet alive and still amongst the fragments of survivors. Listen, beloved, you and I could have and perhaps should have been dead because of what we used to do. And because of what some of us are still doing. But yet God left us here and we all tell the Lord, thank you. We should have been dead because of how we used to live and, and all these things. But yet we ought to tell him thank you. And the reason why we should be thanking God is the mere fact because the Lord lets you and I outlive the trouble that we had and still now and because of that you and I have a testimony to tell and you ought to tell the Lord thank you simply because he allowed you and me to still be here amongst the fragments of survivors you ought to look at somebody and shake their hand and tell them I'm still here listen somebody in here right now you've been bumped dumped, bruised and busted but yet you're still here you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody in here has been fired, but yet you're still here. And you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody been in here that's been laid off, but you, you're still here. And you ought to just tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody in here just has been evicted the other day.